Glad to have you with us. It's a brand new week here on Seattle Seahawks today. I am the somewhat capable host, Tyler Jones, here with you. We are going to take an inside look at the leaked draft plans for your Seattle Seahawks. What exactly does John Schneider have cooking up? We're going to let you hear directly from our inside sources of what the Seahawks plan to do coming up next week. Before we get to that, though, folks, our frenemies of sorts over at the 49ers report, that scumbag Chase Sr. and company, if you recall a couple weeks ago, he challenged us to get 1,000 likes on a video because that's what the 49ers channel did. And I hate to say it, we came up well short. We only hit 613. We're just less than 400 away from reaching 1,000. So Chase said, you know what? You guys didn't do it the first time, but let's give you a second chance and see if you can compete with us here in the NFC West. I said, you know what, Chase? We're going to prove you wrong. We're going to do it right now. So stick it to the 49ers report. Like the video. Let's show them who's boss, and we'll get started with today's show. So let's begin with Byron Murphy. Multiple reports are showing that the Seahawks have an increased, growing interest in the University of Texas star defensive tackle Byron Murphy with the possibility of taking him at number 16 overall. Let's start with Matt Miller of ESPN, what he had to say about this. The hiring of Mike McDonald as coach shifted how we view the Seahawks' needs. But one constant has been at defensive tackle. The Seahawks re-signed Leonard Williams in free agency. But sources with the team reiterated to me this week that the number 16 is the floor for Texas defensive tackle Byron Murphy II. Murphy's first step quickness and power are ideal in the three technique position and would boost the interior pass rush skills of this defense. Now, personally, I think that Murphy's the best defensive tackle in this draft. And think about this. This has been an ongoing problem for the Seattle Seahawks for a while when it comes to help in the interior of the defensive line. There was a lot of you that were upset when the Seahawks didn't take Jalen Carter, and opted for Devin Witherspoon a a year ago. and They kind of just kicked the can down the road, right? Eventually, you're going to have to take care of business and solve this problem. And Byron Murphy could be the solution you're looking for. Now, Field Yates of ESPN also weighed in on this possibility. Seattle needs to hammer the interior of the defensive line at some point early in the draft, and Murphy is the best defensive tackle in the class. He is explosive as a pass rusher and plays with power, torque, and leverage in the running game. And that's not all when it comes to the connections of Byron Murphy and the Seattle Seahawks. Murphy had an official pre-draft visit with Seattle here. So you can see that these dots are starting to connect. The stars are potentially aligning here for Byron Murphy to make his way to the Seahawks. Byron Murphy, Mel Kuyper has him as the number three defensive tackle on his big board. I think Mel's just wrong. He's the best. Uh, First team old Big 12 selection, the Big 12's defensive lineman of the year this past season, helping reshape that Texas defense and win the Big 12 conference and go to the college football playoff this past season. His numbers in 2023 include five sacks, eight and a half tackles for loss, 29 total tackles, and 45 pressures. He was very good this year. Now, the scouting report on Byron Murphy, what exactly he brings to the table, good build, thick lower half. He shoots his hands straight. He's hard to move, which is exactly what you want to hear when it comes to a defensive tackle, right? Solid against double teams. That's also great to hear. But he does stop his feet on contact at times. So that'll be something that he needs to work on there. Let me put it this way. When it comes to Byron Murphy, I know that we've talked a lot about drafting an offensive lineman with the Seahawks' first-round selection, specifically at the guard position. But if Seattle does end up going with Byron Murphy, okay, it's long overdue, right? No one gets to complain about this pick if they go with Byron Murphy at 16. You take care of a solution that needs to be done at some point in time, and you get a a very good player in doing so that's arguably the best of his position here, I can live with Byron Murphy being the Seahawks pick at 16. I don't care what Smitty says. I know that he hates this idea. But you got to hold your hand to the fire, and eventually you got to take care of this problem. 
and Byron Murphy is the solution you could be looking for there. So, what do you guys think? B. John Schneider, answer our pin comment today. Should the Seahawks draft Byron Murphy at 16 overall? Why for yes and for no way in the comment section. Tell us what you think. Today's show is sponsored by Prize Picks. Prize Picks, the place to go for daily fantasy. Made easy. Here's how it works. You choose two or more players on any given category. Get the choice of more or less. Whether you're talking rebounds in basketball, home runs in baseball, maybe you want to look ahead to the NFL season already as we have a look ahead to the 2024 NFL season. I got DK yardage all day. He rules with more than 1,025.5 yards this upcoming season. Also going with Lamar Jackson. They have more than 3,600 and a half passing yards this season. Let's say I put $20 down at both those hits. It's going to turn into $60 on Price Picks. Play along with me. PricePicks.com slash CLNS. Promo code CLNS for a $100 deposit match on your first entry. The link is in the comments and description of today's video. Play along with us. PricePicks.com slash CLNS. So here's the Seahawks draft situation heading into next week. They own a total of seven picks. Uh, just two within the first two days at 16 and at 81. Two second round picks at 102 and 118. And then they wrap up the draft with two picks in the sixth round at 179 and 192. And then a seventh round pick at 235. And here's the deal, folks. This team is close, okay? We have been talking about the Seattle Seahawks the last couple of seasons at 9 and 8. And this year specifically underachieving. You know the reason why there was a coaching staff change? The biggest reason of all is because Pete Carroll did not maximize the talent that was already there. There was no reason why the Seahawks shouldn't have been a playoff team in 2023. You look at the needs, and with what you've brought in, the Seahawks have done a pretty good job when it comes to free agency of taking care of some needs with not spending a ton of money at this point. You need some help still at the interior of the offensive line. Still need some help at the linebacker position, getting some depth pieces. The safety spot, although you had some good moves, bringing in like Rayshon Jenkins, for example, you need more bodies there. And the interior of the defensive line needs some help, where a guy like Byron Murphy could certainly help out as far as that goes. And think about this. When it comes to draft strategy, just because Pete Carroll's gone, this does not change. John Schneider is a man that has been very hell-bent over the years, and he'll be the first to tell you on picking the best available. Not necessarily taking care of needs first, but getting the best guys out there that they see as the best fit. And as far as the strategy goes, what the Seahawks could be looking for, here's more from Brady Henderson of ESPN. With no glaring roster holes outside of guard, the Seahawks can approach their other early round pick with less regard for filling needs than taking the best player available. And given the strong ties to their new coaching staff has to Michigan and Washington programs, don't be surprised if one of those picks played in the national championship game. And so that brings us to potential Huskies or Wolverines. You talk about the Husky connections. Ryan Grubb, the Seahawks offensive coordinator, was the OC at Washington. You had Scott Huff, the offensive line coach for Seattle, was also at Washington Uh, Some of the top players that the Huskies have, a lot of good talent. Roma Dunze is not going to be available in the Seahawks pick, nor do they need a receiver. Uh, But Troy Faltano is uh, an option for Seattle. We've talked about him a lot. Michael Penix Jr. doesn't seem like the Seahawks are likely to go that direction of picking a quarterback. But if the board falls where they may, if Penix slips a little, then who knows? Braylon Trice, solid player. Jalen Polk. uh, Jalen McMillan, uh, very good guys. Uh, Roger Rosengarten, the offensive tackle, he's another name to potentially keep an eye on. And then Dylan Johnson, maybe later on, rushed for 1,000 yards in the Pac-12 Conference this season. Meanwhile, for the Michigan Wolverines, here's a couple players to keep in mind. We know the Seahawks really like J.J. McCarthy. They had some fantastic meetings with him. But the way that his stock has just soared, he's not going to be in position for Seattle to get him. No matter how much they like him, and if you recall, Mike McDonald, of course, was – there as the defensive coordinator when J.J. McCarthy started his career with Michigan, that's likely not going to happen. Roman Wilson, good player, but don't really need receiver help that high. Chris Jenkins had a visit with the Seahawks. Junior Colson had a visit. 
Uh, Mike Sandler still also solid player, could fill a need for Seattle, play Corum. Uh, the Seahawks are going to need to draft another running back, more than likely later on. We'll see where he ends up falling. Zach Zinner, I think, is an interesting prospect. Although he does have the injury, he was the best uh, interior offensive lineman in college football this past year. And A.J. Barner is not a bad tight end. I expect the Seahawks to be drafting the tight end position. So my best bet, you're going to see some Huskies and some Wolverines that were in that national title game end up on this Seahawks roster when it's all said and done next week. Who's a player from either Washington or Michigan that you want the Seattle Seahawks to draft? Give me a name in that comment section. I know you guys want to see some Huskies on this roster. Let us know what you think. For the best Seattle Seahawks coverage around, you got to subscribe to Seattle Seahawks today as we're bringing you daily news and rumors, live shows, Q&A mailbags, and more. And we are getting you ready for the NFL draft like no one else is around here. We've been covering all the visits that the team has had, giving you all the insights, the analysis. Anytime there's news around the NFL draft, we're going to talk about it here on the channel. This is why you subscribe to Seahawks today. Join the family now, youtube.com slash Seahawks TV. Never miss a moment. Stay up to date. Your offseason headquarters, your NFL draft headquarters is right here on the channel. Now, one more final note. When it comes to the Seahawks and their strategy heading into next week is that According to reports, the Seahawks are more than willing to pick up that phone. Doesn't mean that they're going to accept any trade, but John Schneider is certainly willing to listen. And specifically, we're talking about the possibility of the Seahawks trading back from that number 16 overall pick. Seaside Joe, we, we've mentioned a lot on this program, does a really good job covering the Seahawks independently on Substack. He had this to say recently. With new information since the initial prediction two months ago to stick and pick at 16, I'm leaning towards Seattle taking that phone call from the Green Bay Packers at 25 when they are on the clock and Schneider having to make that decision. Do I take this blue chip prospect now or do I take my chances on a player with a lower grade but get more picks later? And here's the deal, okay? With where the Seahawks are at, as we're kind of wrapping up today's show, I want to put this out there. Just because there's a new coaching staff in place, that we're beginning a new era, does not mean that the Seahawks are, by any stretch of the imagination, throwing away this upcoming season. Faces change, but expectations don't. What we're going to see from the Seattle Seahawks as they get through this draft and prepare for 2024. This team's going all in. They are not backing down and putting their best foot forward to try to compete at an extremely high level in 2024. And you look at this roster, of what they have in mind here, they're doing the necessary things they need to do to get to where they want to go. Michael Sean Duggar of The Athletic had this to say, uh, as far as Schneider's plan goes forward with this Seahawks team, Schneider made changes to the roster in the offseason, but kept most of the core intact without spending heavily on any notable free agents. This suggests that John Schneider and the front office believe overhauling the coaching staff will be the change this franchise truly needs to get back to championship contention. Unlike some of the other coaches hired during this cycle, McDonald is walking into a situation in which he's expected to win big and do it immediately. And I couldn't have said any better myself. He's 100% right about that. The expectations are high. Got to get this next week right, get the draft on track, and then you go forward from there. So what about trading that pick from 16, as we talked about? Do you like that idea or not? Let us know what you think. Type T for trade, K for keep. Should the Seahawks trade the number 16 overall selection? Wait in the comment section and let us know. Thanks for joining us here on this edition of Seattle Seahawks Today. Appreciate it. Like the video if you enjoyed today's show. If you want to stick it to Chase Sr. and the 49ers report and show them why you guys are the absolute best fans in the NFC West and why we own this rivalry, hit that like button. We thank you for it, and we'll see you next time here on the channel.